city by the sea. We're going to be using our professional house hunting skills to find a single guy his bachelor pad. Aberdeen is the UK's oil capital and newly adopted home of our house hunter Donald Bailey, a company exec. He's left the bright lights of London and is looking to settle here. I'm living with a couple of pals in a flat in the West End and that's given me an appetite to buy a house here. This is uh, my bedroom that I'm using at the moment. Uh, as you can see, it's just ever so slightly higgledy-piggledy. So this is uh, one of the reasons that I'm eager to get my own place. I'm really enjoying life so far in uh, Aberdeen. There's just so much more quality of life. Um, my job is uh, a lot less stressful and there's a lot more outdoor activities which I can readily do. The city's on the northeast coast between the mouths of the rivers Don and Dee. Its prosperity has always been linked to the North Sea. In the 19th century, the city was famous for its sleek, fast clippers that sailed to India for cargoes of tea. And in 1970, oil was discovered here, and Aberdeen became the Dallas of the North. Since then, house prices have reflected the success of the oil industry year by year. There's a wide range on offer, from fishermen's cottages in Old Aberdeen at 70,000 to grand West End houses for over 300,000. But what sort of property is Donald after? I'm looking for something in the West End uh, with at least two bedrooms so I can possibly rent out a bedroom to my brother who's a student here at the university. I think I'll be able to do a reasonably good job um, renovating a property if it needs a bit of work so I'm certainly always on the lookout for a bargain and if I can make a bit of money on the property as well I'd be very happy with that. So we've got a shrewd investor with an eye for potential but we need more details. Going, we know a little bit about what you're looking for, but so if you can sum it up for us. At least two bedrooms, um, a traditional property with period features. Ideally, I'd like to spend around about 135,000. We better get on with it. Yeah. Let's go. There are lots of two bedroom properties in Aberdeen for 135,000, but Donald's search isn't as straightforward as it seems. He wants it all, space for a lodger, investment potential, a chance to dabble with DIY, and all in the most desirable part of the city, the West End. Royal architect John Smith created many of the buildings here around the same time that Prince Albert asked him to design Balmoral. This is a classy, expensive and extremely desirable part of town. For our first property, we're on tree-lined Whitehall Place. This four-bedroom house is on at offers over £117,000. In Scotland, you're expected to bid over the asking price. The amount varies. In Aberdeen, it's about 10%. Despite its dated decor, it's got loads of space, and we think it could be a bit of a bargain. So this is the sitting room. Now, I'm not sure about the Flintstones fireplace, <laughs> but those wood-burning stoves are absolutely brilliant. They churn the heat out. They're really, okay. really good. I thought that was for pizza, actually, for a minute. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, my initial impression is that it's, uh, it's hard to see past the furniture and the decor. There is real scope for improvement here. This is a whole house, there's four bedrooms. You could chop and change it, you could rent bits of it out. You want to rent out to your brother, Yes. but would you rent out to anyone else? Yes, I would, yeah. I'd be prepared to rent out maybe to another person. But this having four bedrooms and therefore the potential to rent out to more people wouldn't... Uh, no, I don't really want to be a Rigsby character with loads of lodgers. <laughs> Donald seems put off by the decor downstairs, but he ain't seen nothing yet. Oh, my word, look at the paint job in here. <laughs> And, uh, I, I can't work out whether it was deliberate or some horrific accident <laughs> happened. <laughs> The house itself has got several th certain things that puts me off in terms of uh, the room size and uh, just the decor. Uh, a whole house is a bit too housey for me, if you see what I mean. Not really a kind of swanky bachelor pad that I'm looking for. Right. OK. OK, now we know what you want. We're and what you don't want. <laughs> <laughs> so, something a bit more glamorous then. It's a ten-minute walk south of the city centre to the popular area of Ferry Hill. Will our next property do it for Donald? You said you didn't want a house. No. How about a church? Oh, a church, fantastic. <laughs> Would it put you off living in a church? Not at all, no, I think it'd be quite cool, actually. Yeah. yeah. Well, this one's been converted into 13 flats, but we're seeing oh. one on the ground floor. OK. Come and have a look. Yeah. 
Why not? We think the uniqueness of this property could appeal. With two bedrooms and two bathrooms, there's room for a lodger, and it's within budget. It offers over £95,000. Does this give you holy thoughts, Donald, coming in, member uh, of the congregation? Not much does, I'm afraid, but uh, it's a lovely entrance, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, I guess that I expected to be more churchy when I well, went in, like stone floors or wooden floors, something like that. There's no architectural references to the outside of the church. You wouldn't know you were inside a church. Mm. But in a certain way, it's a blank canvas. It's like a shell. You can do whatever you want with it. I don't know which one you'd call the master bedroom, but the, the other one has an ensuite bathroom. This one's perhaps a little bigger. Two beds, two baths is always such a good rental opportunity. Mm -hmm. You are thinking of having lodgers in. That would be the way to go. Offer them the, the ensuite. That would definitely be a good idea. Yeah. Especially if it was my brother. Restrict <laughs> the bacterial growth to one room. <laughs> Oh, now, if you knock the wall here, yep. you'll hear that it sounds like a, a stud wall, which is between you and the walls of the church. Now, I'm surprised they didn't develop it with the exposed stone walls, because that's a feature a lot of people would find attractive. I would say that if you were going to be a bit adventurous, you might make a little hole in the wall and see what's on the other side and see if it's the kind of stonework that you might want exposed. Right, yeah. I would be interested to see, uh, you know, if I could alter it at all. When thinking of changes, phone the planning office, especially with unusual or historic properties, which sometimes have hidden restrictions. I got hold of the council. OK. Um, although the building is not listed, which is good news, they don't know what's behind the plasterwork, but they do say they would encourage anyone to restore features of the original church. Oh, oh well, that's, that's good. That's so a carte blanche to do some uh, renovation. <laughs> you'd need a building warrant, but seemingly you'd get one. The converted church is tempting, but it will need work to restore it to its former glory. Whereas Property 3, back in the West End, is packed with those period features Donald says he wants. This end of terrace flat is big. It has two huge bedrooms and a garden at the back. Alpha offers over 115,000. You've got bedrooms to your right and reception rooms to your left. So this is the sitting room. Oh, wow. My reaction is it's fantastic to be back in Scotland to find these proportions in, in, in our living room. We just don't get them down no. south. There's one drawback about this flat. The bathroom, which is a little on the small side, but... The main bedroom's a lot bigger than yeah, the no. second one. This is really nice. Uh, I like the bay window. There's a lot of light coming in. That window in itself is a beautiful feature. I don't know if you've noticed all the way through the flat, the, the doors and the fantastic skirtings, all the windows, they're all painted over. Would you strip them or would you leave them like that? It's definitely something I'd consider because uh, I think it would go very well in the hallway with the floorboards. Mm -hmm. uh, and I do like that kind of authentic look. You could take that door off and strip it and dip it and that would cost you about £25. Yeah, but you've got to get it there. Pounds. You've got to take it off, get it to the place where they strip and dip. Oh, OK. Bring it back. Sounds very kinky, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's really the sort of thing that I'm looking for, actually. It's got two, two nice-sized bedrooms. My only slight concern is with the uh, bathroom and the size of it, especially if I'm going to have a lodger. Great, a strong contender. But can Donald compromise on the bathroom to get those fantastic high ceilings and period features? It's a good level to set for ourselves, anything that falls below this. Out the window? Yeah. Yeah, no, fair enough, yeah. Donald, end of the day, how are we doing? I think you're doing OK. We've seen a flat, a house and a converted church. Yeah, that's right. I think uh, the house I'd have to rule out at the moment. It's really not my cup of tea. Um, the converted church was interesting, but I thought it was a bit bland on the inside. My favourite at the end of day one, I think, is the flat. Uh, okay. I thought it was very nice. So, we've got a hot, a lukewarm and a stone cold. Yeah, that's a fair assessment. Not a bad spot to be in at the end of day one, I reckon, Kirst. Oh. Lots to sleep on. Well, let's pick up the pace in the morning. Absolutely. Absolutely.